The following program is rated T for Teen for the use of tools and materials that can be harmful to unsupervised usage. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello everyone, Mr. Y here for Mr. Y Media, and yes, that is my actual name. On today's episode, something slightly different, an unboxing slash review video. For myself, and probably a lot of gamers out there, nothing says immersive experience quite like two beautifully painted armies on a well-crafted battlefield. In my own personal collection, I'd say at this point, 60% of it is scratch-built. So for those that can do math, it means 20% was store-bought. And sometimes I get asked, what would I recommend if maybe I don't have the know-how, or I don't have the time, to actually sit down and scratch-build these pieces? And there's a couple great companies out there, stuff like Foreground, which is more MDF, you've got Plasticraft, which has a variety of different styles, and even Army in a Box. That stuff comes pre-built and pre-painted, though you are paying a little bit more for what you're getting. For the longest time, my golden standard was two different pieces. It was Warcry and Kill Team Starter Boxes. These were fantastic back in the day because they were 180 retail Canadian, and it came with a bunch of scenery pieces, your rule book, your war bands, dice cards, etc. So you chop that in half for just the scenery, you're paying 90 Canadian to get a ton of scenery. Now unfortunately, these boxes are no longer available as a retailer. Uh, the running joke with my G-Dub rep is that, hey, I had eight people lined up to buy these. It's like you don't want money anymore. But uh, yeah, there's no longer that kind of great bundle deal out there on the market, or at least there wasn't for a while. And that's when my ears perked up about Rampart, because it came with a lot of things on their website. Now, we need to do full disclosure here. Rampart is by Archon Studios, aka Protus Games. Now, that name might be familiar to some gamers out there. They've had a bit of a turbulent past, to say the least. They no longer have the license for Alien vs. Predator, Mutant Chronicles, and their previous Kickstarters were uh, pretty rough, to say the least. Now, to be fair, Rampart seems to have gotten all their Kickstarters sorted out, it got to retailers like me, and you know what? I'm willing to give it a chance. Maybe they turn the ship around and they're coming up with products like this now. So this review will be based purely on the product, not the company, just what comes in the box. And I'm kind of interested to see what happens. Let's get started. All right, so this is the Rampart Eternal Cathedral set. Now, full disclosure, I have already taken off the shrink wrap, as you can see, and I've already rummaged through the bits a little bit. I wanted to sort of get an idea before I had the brilliant idea to actually do this as a, uh, a review. So you might notice there's some pieces missing, but uh, it, it's me, not them. So don't worry about it, all right? So this has 129 elements, hard plastic, magnet ready, fully customizable. Let's start digging into this box. So, right off the bat, you got your little flyers here. It shows off uh, some of the other stuff here. I actually, oh, hold still. I actually really like this, uh, get the lighting there, this Aztec kind of look. So there's the Aztec ruins, and there is a Admech sort of industrial forge. You got this, it shows you just a little brief tutorial how to assemble it, all the pieces that it comes with. All right, so these are, this one's here. There are toppers for all the towers. There's like the um, parts of the rampart there, uh, some trees and overgrown vines. Looks kind of neat. You get about four of those, it looks like. There is your main wall segment. So you got a couple pieces like that. You got your tower pieces that you glue to the backs. They have these holes in them. That's where you magnetize them so everything just sort of snaps together. I'm not sure how I'm feeling about that, if that's going to be too noticeable. Now, bear in mind, they do have the little pegs there. You can, you can put them all in the slots. And there's this accessory one here. It's got little gargoyles. It's got the torches, so you can just pop those right in. So maybe it won't be as invasive as like I'm, I'm visualizing in my head. But, uh, you know, initial, initial reaction, the, the giant gaping holes are like, oh my goodness. All right, there is sort of the, the ruins and rubbles, the low walls. Um, I kind of like the designs. I'm, I actually do appreciate that it's not a big industrial sector like the 40K stuff. Like here is the, um, here's the, the tall pieces with sort of the stained glass windows. There's not like a big industrial fan. There's not a, uh, a bunch of wires and cables coming off of it. So you could, I think, use this in fantasy or science fiction. 
uh, like you see there, there's a piece there I, I already pulled out. It's like, oh, look at this. And then, oh, I should do a review. That'd be a great idea. Oh, boy. Uh, there's another sort of accessory sprue. You got, um, these ones are more like cybernetic uh, rampart pieces. So that's kind of neat. You got a bunch of statues, some stairwells. That's cool. Uh, looks like I got a couple more wall segments here. And these ones are some tall pillars, as you can see. Some end pieces, more holes. And this is the floor. Uh, so that would sit in there like that. Now, right off the bat, I gotta say, I'm not really blown away by the floor pieces. The problem is they're really thick and they've got these pieces that just sort of protrude off of everything. Now, this one's kind of interesting. It's got that chaos uh, kind of sigil coming out of it. But again, it's going to be kind of hard to place the models there. And this is all you get for floors. That's just five pieces. And I'm probably going to be able to get about, you know, judging from all the sprues, uh, probably about, I don't know, four or five pieces. So I don't know if these are going to be enough to really cut it. But that's, uh, that's counting my chickens before they've hatched. So who knows, maybe these will be fine. If not, we will see. So that's been the unboxing. I, I, should, I, should, I should have them. I've never done a review, okay? Uh, this is new to me, bear with me. Uh, lots of sprues, looks pretty. It's plastic crack. And um, I'm gonna start building a couple pieces. We'll see how it turns out. Okay, so I have started building some of these pieces. I started going for one of the tall towers. Now, it snaps together relatively easily. Like so, just connect it like that. The holes, like, it is noticeable. Again, I haven't started filling them in yet, but, uh, I don't know, maybe once I get a, some paint on there, it'll look a little bit better. Now, one of the things that really stood out to me was how blatant this is copying the war, or sorry, the kill team scenery, um, minus the big industrial fans and all that. But have a look at this. So here's your tower, and that connects almost perfectly. They're almost identical in height. Same kind of design, right? The stained glass windows and all that. So I don't know, like it, it seems, it really seems like they're just sort of copying the style, right? Like, look at that. Once I paint that up, you won't even notice the difference. Now on the surface, I do love this uh, Kill Team scenery. Like, they did a heck of a good job. It looks great. But this is just... I'm, I'm basically just buying more of it. So, I'm not sure how I'm feeling about that. But, like, it looks good. It's not bad. And I think it's a little bit less than the other stuff. So, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm overthinking it. But I'm going to assemble some of the smaller pieces now. And I'm going to sort of have a look at how they turn out. So, bear with me here. Okay, this is the first finished piece that I've come up with. And that is just two of the low wall segments, a couple of the broken ones on the end caps there. And you'll notice there is a different type of floor. Now, again, I tried sort of tinkering around with this guy. That would be it. That's not really much coverage. That's only gonna get like a handful of models on there. Now, agreed, I could use a couple more of these pieces and, and you know, that'd be enough for one building, but that's it. You get five little pieces of flooring and that's just not gonna cut it. So what I did instead was I took some coffee stir sticks, broke them into different sizes, it's uh, braced on some cardboard, and I just mounted that in place. Now, I am gonna say, I don't mind these, the holes, right? I didn't plug them, I wanted to sort of see how it looked, and it's not super noticeable at a, a casual glance. So not too invasive. Uh, I think I maybe overthought it a little bit, but um, yeah, I gotta say I'm not too keen on the floor segment and I'm gonna keep building and sort of see what I come up with, but like, there's some nice detail. I mean, got some some cool work in there. There's the bricks and the metal um, and the interior, if I can get a good shot. I haven't really finished painting in there, but yeah. So that is uh, the first piece. What do you guys think so far? All right, so here we are. We have the five completed buildings and one piece of scatter terrain. 
in theory, I probably could have built a six piece if I had to maybe taken some of the wall panels, the scattered terrain. Uh, but for what it is, it's not too bad. The main problem that I'm having is the flooring, or lack therefore of. All you have is one complete panel here. These ones are like well, two inch by two inch roughly. And the problem is, they're relatively thick. It's going to be very difficult to balance most soldiers on that. So at this point, I'm probably going to have to go in and start doing more fabrication uh, with the coffee stir sticks. Just so I have somewhere like this area up top. Otherwise, yeah, it's just not going to work, I don't think. So, yeah, it's a good yield for a core box set. Um, I bought it for about 100 Canadian, so let's say you divide that. It's about $20 a piece for each of these buildings. Not terrible on today's market, but the fact that it's not complete because of the flooring, I'm going to have to fabricate something from scratch. So is it a complete kit? Mm, I have to say probably no. Uh, I'm going to start painting everything though. I'll try to match it as close as I can to this guy and we'll go from there. All right, we have all the pieces fully painted up now and uh, I don't think the holes are too invasive actually. You don't really notice them that much. A little bit on the top, but those are going to get covered by um, basically more of those floor panels I got in the works. So I haven't done any detail work. Um, there's a lot of like nice little window outlines. Uh, there's some columns. There's a little bit of stained glass window style up there. Uh, most of that I'm going to do in a bronze and gold. And then there'll be a gunmetal and sort of a steel mithril highlight. Uh, there's also little things of bricks as well that I might do um, in sort of a rusty brown, maybe a little bit of red highlights, but not too much. I don't want to really make it pop. So maybe I'll go with like a dark chocolate brown. Not too sure yet. But uh, this is what it looks like with just the, the stone all painted up, minus the detail work, of course. And I'm starting to fabricate the floors. So we'll see how that turns out. All right, time for the next update. As you can see here, I've done the hardwood floors for all the pieces, and I think that looks pretty good. There's a little grunt there just for a scale reference. But my problem is with this, I had to do all this work just to make functioning pieces of scenery. The fact is, if you look at what they give you, this is it. So it's enough to cover one, one and a half buildings here, and that's it. All this wood is still exposed. Like, I don't know how you would really go about this. If you spread it out like so, that's ridiculous, right? So while I do like the buildings, I think they look pretty decent. And these uh, magnet holes, at first I was a, a little bit worried they might be a bit invasive, but you can hardly notice them really. I don't think it's really that big of a deal, more of a nitpick if I, if I may say so. But this, uh, the flooring, that just really throws me through a loop. So what I'm going to do is paint all of these up into this hardwood floor color. I'm going to do all the detail work with the metals and some of the, the stained glass windows and whatnot. And uh, we'll come back with that. But uh, yeah, just this floor, it's, it's not, <laughs> it's just not what I was expecting. And I checked out their other products because they also have uh, the Aztec Ruins. And they have the Adaptus Mechanicus industry. They're the same thing. You only get four tiny floor pieces and one large floor. That's it. So while I was hoping that maybe they might have some different layouts, it might be a little bit more user friendly. The fact is, if you're only getting four and a big uh, floor piece, that's really not much to work with. So uh, yeah, let's get painting and we'll come back in a few. All right, gang, here we are, the final product. Everything is fully painted. I did some uh, metallic colors along the trim. Uh, there's some silver and gold in there with some bronze. And then all the pieces are fully painted now with their hardwood floors, obviously. And, uh, yeah, there's a lot of really cool details in these. Um, I did a little bit of the metal work up top. There's the bricks, uh, the wooden panels, some silver in the chain a little bit on the interior as well and then obviously this lovely hardwood floor that it will be the envy of the neighborhood and uh yeah these holes are not as invasive as i had first feared unless you actually are like looking for them they kind of blend in so not too bad there 
So there we go, five pieces, all fully painted, wooden floors, all the metal highlights, and the stonework. If you want to see a sort of tutorial of how to do these, check out on the YouTube channel for wooden panels. And then look at the ruins or the dungeon tiles will give you sort of a breakdown of the gray colors that I used. All right, it is now time for the final verdict for the video. Would I recommend this product to other people, yes or no? And what's the final score going to be? I feel comfortable giving this kit a 6.5 stars out of 10. Uh, some of the good things, it is relatively affordable compared to today's market for model kits out there. Uh, the fact that it is a relatively generic looking kit that uh, you could use for fantasy or science fiction, so it's got some versatility there. And this went together relatively easy. I didn't actually have any trouble when I was constructing them. Now, on to some of the negatives. Uh, right off the bat, the fact that it isn't tied to any IP, sure that's good, but it is also a blatant copy of the Kill Team scenery. The fact that it's comparing it side to side, as you saw, maybe a quarter centimeter difference between the two is, is that minimal. So uh, they kind of lost me on that one. If it had been the Aztec, I think I would have been a little bit more uh, excited about it. But unfortunately, as a retailer, I couldn't get it. Uh, the holes are a little invasive. I, I don't hate them as much as I thought I would, but it's still there. I think if it had been a thin piece of plastic, you could have just popped out and then stuck the magnet in, that'd been better, but um, I'm only doxing a few points for that one. Something I didn't actually mention during the build, though, was the sprues themselves, and uh, especially the pillars. Where the point of contact with the sprue to the pillar is, is actually very invasive. On the edge of the pillars here, you can see there are these diamonds and uh, sort of like little leaves that are etched into it. Well, those points of contact are invasive. They actually go all the way over them. So as you're sitting there with your knives and you're carving it out, you're going to lose detail. So I'm doxing a few points for that one as well. But the main thing, I think most of you, you probably guess where this was going. The floors. This I am doxing so many points for. I feel like this kit is an incomplete one. The fact that if you wanted this to be a multi-level terrain piece you have to fabricate because there's just not enough pieces to go around. And as you can see, I made two pieces that are a lot taller than the others. That's that's not much to go off of. So would I recommend this product? Yeah, actually I would, but I would warn people up front, it's not gonna be complete if you're trying to make multi-leveled buildings. Uh, you are gonna have to do some fabrication. It's a nice piece overall, went together nice and easy, and it looks good on the battlefield, it actually, matches a lot of the other stuff that I already have. So yeah, it's not a bad kit, six and a half stars, but the floors. <laughs> what do you guys think? Is it something you get? Yes, no? Let us know in the comments down below. Well, that's been today's episode. Hope you guys enjoyed it, maybe found some useful information in there. If you did, make sure you hit the like, the share, subscribe down below, and please pass this around to all your friends. We're really trying to build this channel from the ground up. And so far, we've had 2,000 views, which is fantastic. Thank you guys so much. We've had 4,000 eyeballs, which means it's showing up in people's Facebook feed, their YouTube algorithms. And that's because you guys are commenting, liking, and sharing. It's really helping boost our signal. We're getting plays in the UK. We're getting plays down in the States. So thank you guys so much for your continued support. And there's anything you want me to build an upcoming episode, put it down in the comments down below, and maybe we'll be able to get to an upcoming episode. On that note, I've been Mr. Waugh from Mr. Waugh Media. I hope you are thoroughly entertained. Am I here for a reason?